Welcome teachers to our Let Review 2023. Let us offer all of this for God's glory. All right, so in this particular uh, review, we are going to talk about social studies that may include specifically on sociology, uh, geography, uh, anthropology, and world history. Okay, so I hope that you will find this video um, helpful to your review. Okay, so this composed of uh, 25 questions with rationalization. Okay, so let us begin. Question number one. All of these are reasons why the United Nations was established, except to blank. Okay, so it means to say that the choices are the reasons why the United Nations was created, except sa isa. Okay, so the answer here is letter D. It's the spread of the word of God. Kasi the most important reasons for United Nations creation is that uh, to maintain international peace and security, uh, protect human rights, deliver humanitarian aid, uh, promote sustainable development, including health, and uh, uphold international law. So the spread of the word of God was not included. Okay, so the UN or the United Nations does not promote any but respect all religions. So the term word of God is used most exclusively by Christians. Okay, number two. What is the best indicator of quality education as invoked in the Constitution? Uh, generation of reliable measurement, blank. Okay, is it A, of educational outcome, B, on cohort survival rate, C, on dropout rate, and D, on participation rate? Okay, the answer is letter A, of educational outcome. Okay, so the best indicator, so the effect, effectiveness is best measured by outcome or result. Number three, uh, what are considered major goals of multicultural education? Okay, so one, catering to diversity of learners. Two, considering social class and ethnic groups. Three, providing equal opportunities to education. So the answer is letter D. Okay, so all of the statements are considered major goals no, of multicultural education. So it's catering to diversity of learners, considering social class and ethnic groups, and providing equal opportunities to education. So the multicultural education aims to teach the concept of opportunities for students from diverse racial, ethnic, social class, and cultural groups. Okay? Question number uh, four. Which of the following statements reflects a strong school culture? A. Has network of communication. B. Has definite organizational core values. C. Has high standards of performance. And D. Has informal rules of behavior. Okay. So the answer is letter B. Okay. The statement that reflects a strong school culture is Letter B, has definite organizational core values. So when we say definite, it is um, clearly stated, uh, very specific, exact, and is, of course, doable. Okay, so the school's culture is reflected in its core values, which are embodied in its mission and vision statements. Number five, the logo of the Olympic Games represents the interconnectedness of the countries in the world. What does the global activity promote? A, world history, B, world industry, C, world peace, and D, world tourism. The answer is world peace. It's letter C. Okay, so the Olympic Games sought to foster the ideal of a sound mind in a sound body and to promote friendship among nations. Okay, so the, the logo here below, this logo expresses or it represents no, the union of 
continents. Okay. Number six, uh, when a school's mission says that it offers a holistic approach to education, which goal in peace education are they helping to achieve? A. Friendship among different cultural groups. B. Full development of the human personality. C. Promotion of understanding and tolerance. And D. Respect for human rights. The answer is letter B, full development of the human personality because it's holistic approach to education. So when we say holistic education, um, does not only provide students with skills, but will tackle the academic rigors, but also prepare them for the challenges of life. So the holistic approach that is... Uh, it recognizes no, the importance of uh, the physical, the emotional, the moral, the spiritual development of the learner. Okay, number six. When the students in Mr. Pahera's Asian history class uh, visited mosques and temples and interviewed the people inside, in a way, he is promoting blank. A. Appreciation of different cultures. B. Awareness of social differences. C. Respect for human rights. And D. Tolerance towards other religion. The answer is... <coughs> excuse me. The answer is letter D, tolerance towards other religion. Okay, so when we say tolerance, when that is used as a noun, that is a willingness to accept other beliefs that are different from your own. Okay, so the mosques and the temples are places of worship and are connected to certain religion. Number eight, what makes the social science a science? A. It uses a lot of theories. B. It explores the different aspects of a human society. C. It uses empirical methods in research. And D. It is a systematic body of knowledge. Okay, the answer is letter C. It uses empirical methods in research. Okay, so when we say empirical, it is based on observation based on experiment experiences rather than theories okay so social science explores the different aspects of human society and uses rigorous empirical methods when conducting research number nine the students in uh, PEM or the PEHM class Physical education, health, music class were tasked to note down the Spanish influences in our arts and culture. So which process explains this presence of Spanish influence? A. Cultural diffusion. <coughs> B. Inheritance. C. Interbreeding. And D. Evolution. Okay, so the answer is letter A. Cultural Diffusion. So the cultural diffusion is used to describe the spread of cultural items from one culture to another. So ano daw yung mga Spanish influence to us, no, Filipino. So that is cultural diffusion. Okay. All right. So question number 10. Uh, children learn culture from parents and teachers. What is this process called? A. Enculturation B. Assimilation C. Acculturation and D. Accommodation The answer is letter A. It's enculturation. Okay, so when we say enculturation, that uh, refers to the process by which an individual learns and internalizes the norms, the values of their own culture. Okay? It is also by which a person learns and acquires the values, the behavior that are appropriate or necessary in that culture. Okay, number 11. The central idea of this curriculum design is that each social science discipline carries a basic structure of concepts that can be organized to make learning more meaningful. A. Fused. 
B. Holistic. C. Spiral. And D. Widening horizon. The answer is spiral. Okay, so the spiral curriculum lets students revisit a subject matter's content at the different levels of the development of the subject matters being studied. Number 12, which is not a definition of sustainable development. Okay, so ibig sabihin, all of the choices are the definition of sustainable development. The question is, which is not? Okay? A. A pattern of resources used that aims to meet human needs while preserving the environment so that these needs can be met not only in the present but also for future generation. <coughs> Letter B. Development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability to the future generations to meet their own needs. Letter C. <coughs> Statement wherein economic, political, cultural, gender, and scientific growth is rich and the development that is concerned for the carrying capacity of natural system with the social challenges being facing no, humanity. The answer is letter C. This is not a definition of sustainable development. Okay, so the widely accepted definition of sustainable development involves three things the environment, the present generation, and the future generation. So the statement, this economic, political, cultural, gender, and scientific growth is rich, does not include the concern of future generations. Number 13. What are the functions of myths and legends? A. They became the basis for many early religions. B. They serve as explanation for the many phenomena during our ancestors' time. C. They help us understand the culture and beliefs of our ancestors. And D. All of the above. So very clear, no? That the answer is all of the above, okay? Because myths and legends, instead of scientific explanations, they were used not to explain natural phenomena. So, ano yung di kayang explain So, they are using this, myths and legends. So, this mirror, the culture of our ancestors, and eventually developed into early form of religion. Number 14. So, unlike other um, unlike other uh, primates, what do human beings have in common? Okay, so when we say primates, it's any mammal of the group that includes um, tortures, monkey, uh, apes, and humans. So uh, unlike other primates, though, what do human beings have in common? A, acute perception. B, uh, depth uh, perception. C, grasping hands, and D, beliefs about the supernatural. So the answer is letter D. Uh, human beings have in common, no? This is beliefs about the supernatural. So the early and modern humans both have supernatural beliefs. So primates like chimpanzees do not exhibit this trait. Number 15, which could be a possible explanation by the Cro-Magnons created cave arts and artifacts. One, it may have something to do with early religions. Two, it may be a hobby that they have taken up. Three, it may be for aesthetic purposes only. The answer here is letter A. One, it may have something to do with early religions, okay? Although there are many theories, no? So the caves are located in inaccessible areas for them to be continually inhabited or for the painting to be done merely out of a hobby. Most theories suggest that it is for religious purposes. <coughs> Number 16, what are the development brought about by the discovery of agriculture? 1. Farming enabled people to stay in one place which grew into villages. 2. The surplus of food and village living enabled the people to focus on specializing on other things. And 3. The different products of farmers and artisans encourage barter and trade. 
the answer is letter D. The statement 1, statement 2, and statement 3 are correct. Okay? So farming enabled humans to stay in one place and cultivate the lands. The surplus food were kept or traded and allowed others to take up another livelihood. So this eventually led to division of labor. Okay, 17. What proves that many early civilizations were theocratic? Pag sinasabi natin na theocratic, that is a system of government, a form of government in which the priest, which... Um, in the name of God, parang yung priest yung highness nila. Okay? So, the is it A, the people created temples for their deities? Um, B, the people usually had a patron god and goddess? C, the leaders were usually high priests or seen as representatives of the gods? And D, the people worship many gods and goddesses? So, the answer is letter C. The leaders were usually high priests or seen as a representative of the gods. Okay, so the theocracy is a form of government that is governed by the divine or whose officials are divinely guided. Number 18. Uh, the first people who widely used bronze tools were the black. A. Sumerians. B. Lydians, C. Hebrews, and D. Amarians. The answer is Sumerians, letter A. So the development of the first civilization is aided by the widespread use of bronze tools and weapons. So the Sumerians, as mentioned earlier, was the first group of people to qualify as civilization. Number 19, which is not a legacy of the sexagesimal system. Okay, so it is, uh, is it A, 60 minutes in an hour, B, 60 seconds in a minute, three, 360 degrees in a circle, and D, none of the above? The answer is letter D, none of the above. So when we say uh, sexagesimal system, it is another Sumerian contribution. No? It is a numeral system whose base is 60. Thus, we have 60 seconds, uh, 60 minutes, and 360 degrees in a circle. Number 20. Okay, so what body of water was very important for the development of the ancient Greek civilization? A. Tibet River, B. Mediterranean Sea, C. Atlantic Ocean, and D. Um, Asian Sea. Okay, the answer is letter D, agency. So the islands where the first civilization in Greece emerged, no? The Minuan and the Mycenaean. So are these are located in the Asian Sea. 21. So the earth, the blank is considered the lowest point on earth. A, Caspian Sea. B, Dead Sea. C, Lake Baikal, and D, Red Sea. The answer is Dead Sea, okay? So the Dead Sea has the lowest elevation on Earth's surface on a dry land. So this causes a very high salinity and makes it impossible, impossible for life to flourish, thus the name Dead Sea, okay? So when we say high salinity or salinity, that is the level of saltiness, okay? The salt in the water. So the saltiness is about 9.6 times saltier than the ocean. So because of its high salinity, no life can thrive in this uh, sea, okay? That, that's why it is called Dead Sea. Okay, and that is also the lowest point on Earth. 22, the Earth is approximately blank percent water. Is it A, 10, B, 26, C, 50, and D, 74? The answer is letter D. The Earth is approximately 74% water. Okay, so the abundance of water on Earth allows life to flourish in the planet. It is approximately 71% salt water ocean and 3% of which fresh water. Okay, 23. 
Cape Horn is described as the sailor's graveyard because of its frequent storms. In which continent can we find this? A. South America, B. Australia, C. Asia, and D. Africa. The answer is letter A, South America. So the Cape Horn is found in South America. Uh, it is located in Chile, the southernmost part of America. Number 24. So what artificial waterway allows transportation from Europe to enter Asia without going around Africa? A. Erie Canal B. Canal Grande C. Panama Canal and D. Zoys Canal The answer is letter D. Zoys Canal Okay, so the Zoys Canal which is also known as the Highway to India, is located in Egypt and connects the Red Sea and Mediterranean Sea. So the Panama Canal joins the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. So the Erie Canal joins the Atlantic Oceans and the Great Lakes of America. The Canal Grande also is major water traffic corridor, corridor in Venice, Italy. Okay, last number. 25. It is the largest Muslim country in terms of population. A. India. B. Indonesia. C. Iraq. And D. Iran. The answer is Indonesia. Okay, so the largest Muslim country in terms of population. So Indonesia is the fourth most populous country in the world, majority of which are Muslims. So this makes them the largest Muslim country in terms of population okay so that would be all thank you so much for listening thank you so much for um having me as you are doing your uh review no so i hope that you find this um video very helpful to your review and i hope that you can pass no the let examination this coming September 2026. So more on the social studies review. So I am currently encoding no, the, the questions no, on it might be the world history. Okay, so thank you so much for listening and God bless us all.